Hearing none, I'll bring it back to the council for its deliberation, and we'll start with Councilmember Moskin. I'll defer to Councilman Buchanan since he made the motion. Fair enough. Thank you. Councilmember Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, obviously, I made this motion, and I, and I sort of want to articulate my thoughts. They're probably a little different maybe than some of the others that you heard because I want to be... I, I've tried very hard up here to make sure that we always make decisions, or I try very hard to make decisions based on policies and not on personalities. And I don't want uh, this discussion really to be about um, personalities. I will say from the beginning, I think every member of all of my colleagues up here are qualified to assume the position of mayor or mayor pro tem, all five. And so my thoughts here are not a disrespect to any one of them or any or any one or two or three or four of them. I made this motion because I want to support a return to call it a tradition, a past practice, a, a sort of an expectation about how the rotation system would work in this town. And I do that not just because of tradition for its own sake, but I do that because I do think a process of a set rotation criteria serves as well. And it does so for several reasons. One is it avoids the appearance of deals or trade-offs. Not that such things are necessarily made, but what I'm saying is it avoids that appearance or even the pressure to do something like that. It avoids the issues of partisanship and factionalism that can, create it, that can be created because council members acknowledge a set of criteria that they will adhere to even when times get tough, even when there is disagreement. And that is incredibly important to the collegiality of a council in a town that does not directly elect its mayor, and its mayor is not an executive mayor. The executive of this town is our city manager. We have a council manager form of government. As a consequence, I think it is better for this town to have a specific set of criteria that they will acknowledge will be the criteria for the selection of the next mayor and the mayor pro tem. And I think that that does more for our town in the long run than anything else. Because remember, no individual council member, not even the mayor, can give direction to city staff. That's against the law. It has to come from the council as a whole. And each council member can know that whatever the differences were in their votes on a previous, on a previous occasion, that their term comes. Their opportunity to serve this city comes by a, the application of a criteria that, when breached, becomes much harder to return to and re, mu it's much more difficult to restore the collegiality I think that criteria gives us. It also, I think, is a better representation of the voters because, again, we don't directly elect our mayor. But what it says is that each council member who is elected, who may have a set of voters who support that individual, will have an individual that for who for a year will be the face of the community as mayor. That person's policies will not necessarily prevail because it takes all of us to do to make policy. That person can't make a law or a rule or a regulation by him or herself. But each person out there knows that when they voted for somebody that there would be a system in place where that person would rotate in to be mayor. I think that was the expectation of the community and has been for a number of years. Call it a tradition, call it a practice, but I think that's what happens. And I believe that that, to all of you, I believe that sincerely. And I say that because I said last year, when this issue came up, that I was prepared to support Kurt as mayor pro tem to Joe being mayor. I meant it then. And had that come to pass, Kurt as mayor pro tem, I would be sitting here tonight telling you I would vote for him to be mayor because I think that's the right way to do it. And I make that statement because I make that statement even in light of the fact that Kurt and I have had occasional differences of opinion. He didn't, he didn't vote for me to be mayor, and that was his right. And he, act, and he openly opposed my re-election, as is his right. We don't always agree. But I think a system in place better serves this town 
than one that is ignored because of a perceived a perceived dislike of a particular individual over a particular issue at a particular time. And I think that works well in small towns with council manager forms of government. And I have, by the way, stood by this tradition or practice, whatever you want to call it, before any of my colleagues up here were elected to their current term. I faced this issue when I first took the dais at city council. And I stuck by it then because I think that's what the citizens have a right to expect. Um, I do. I want to reiterate, I believe every one of my colleagues here would receive my vote when his or her time came to be mayor. Now, I won't say there could never be an exception, as some people have argued there should have been a year ago. But I think it should be an extraordinary situation. The council still has to vote on approving this because we don't have this written in the law. We, we've honored it by our, by our willingness to recognize it in the informal way that oftentimes things are done at Sierra Madre. But the council has to formally come forward and approve the selection of the mayor and the mayor pro tem. And there might be a reason where they need to be thinking creatively because somebody may decline the nomination or somebody, or there may be a, an extreme and extraordinary circumstance where somebody may not rotate into the mayor. I, I, I'm thinking of very extreme circumstances when I say that. I, I, I can only imagine, you know, completely outlandish view. I, obviously, if somebody surprised us was a, a, I don't know, a Klan member or something, obviously this town would not accept that as a, the face of the city. But none of those circumstances or extraordinary circumstances exist here. Joe Mosca has worked as hard as anybody who has ever sat on this council. He has reached out and been a good ambassador for the city, promoting the city's interests here and regionally, and that's what a mayor has to do. And I don't think anybody can say that he really doesn't have the ability or the qualifications or the skill or the current knowledge to be mayor. I think that was even acknowledged last year by those who voted against him. And I know by the argument about how this from time to time has been ignored. In the case of Chris Miller Fisher, who is the one thing that every, one that everybody cites because she was bypassed for Mayor Pro Tem and the arguments went back and forth. She wasn't going to be here next year. She said she wasn't running for re-election, so on and so forth. But everybody who cites the Chris Miller Fisher situation cites it as an acknowledged wrong. And if it was wrong then, it was wrong before wrong now. I want to make one last thing. This is not to detract from the service of any of my colleagues. It's not to detract from the service of our mayor. And he's my mayor too. And I'm a mayor pro tem. This is not a detraction from that. All of them, I think, are qualified. But My view, as I said, is not born of personalities or disrespect for anyone. And I wish well to whoever becomes mayor or mayor pro tem. But in a small city with at large elections that yearns for collegiality, not partisan divide, the tradition best provides for that. It worked well in the past, and my view is it should simply be restored today. And I thank you for your patience, Mr. Mayor, and allowing my, my, uh, Typically long-winded response, Faye, I know, but thank you. Councilmember Washington.